France 2019 Weekly Roundup, sponsored by Visa, proud partner of the FIFA Women's World Cup. Hello and welcome to our France 2019 Weekly Update, where Sky Sports, in partnership with Visa, will be looking at some of the moments that changed the games in the FIFA Women's World Cup. And there's been plenty of happiness, heartbreak and history making in week two. England progressed to the knockout stage as Group D winners, having won all three of their group stage matches for the first time. But there was anguish for Scotland after their controversial exit. They surrendered a three-goal lead inside the last 20 minutes against Argentina. VAR played a massive part as a twice-taken penalty gave Argentina the draw, which eliminated Scotland. Brazil forward Marta made history after scoring her 17th World Cup goal. It makes her the all-time leading scorer at either men's or women's finals. And Italy ended nearly 30 years of hurt by reaching the knockout phase for the first time since the inaugural Women's World Cup in 1991. And joining me this week to review the key moments in the East, the England and Lyon midfielder Izzy Christensen, who narrowly missed out on Phil Neville's squad because of Inji. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get the thoughts from you in one moment, Izzy. But first of all, England's Lionesses made it into the knockout phase and got revenge over Japan for their semi-final defeat in Canada four years ago. Manager Phil Neville joked Ellen White had pinned his photo to the dartboard at the England team hotel after he left her out of the earlier game against Argentina and she responded with a double to make sure England claimed top spot in Group D. So mission accomplished for England, three games, three wins and a maximum nine points. It's the first time they've won all their group games at a World Cup and the mood in the camp is understandably upbeat. Tournament football from my experience is about momentum. Um, and gaining confidence along the way. Um, and I think, yeah, everyone's in a good place, a good spot, and rightly so. We, we, we've done well, and there's a lot of players have played, um, and that's been nice, like rotation to get people World Cup opportunities and minutes. And I think everyone that's come in has done an amazing job. So, Izzy, Karen Kearney there seems to think that England have a lot more growing to do in this tournament. Is it a slight worry that we haven't seen dominance over 90 minutes yet from England? Tournament football is about peaking at the right time and I think that as much as we ne not, haven't necessarily seen the best of our England team, I still think there's so much more to come and I think that's really exciting going into the knockout stages. And you know the individual girls so well, who's got more to give? Is it a team performance or is it individuals? I think there's always room to grow. I think that we defensively we can tighten up a little bit and I also think mid, in the midfield we, we can also kind of push forward a little bit, bit more. I've seen Jill Scott doing some fantastic runs into the box and I think that it's only a matter of time before one of those runs results in a goal for her. Now to a key moment which changed Scotland's final group game and meant Shelley Kerr's side crashed out of the tournament. Once again, Scotland were on the wrong end of a VAR decision as they surrendered a three-goal lead in the last 20 minutes against Argentina. They were still leading 3-2 when a VAR awarded penalty was saved by Lee Alexander in stoppage time. But VAR intervened again and the penalty was retaken after Alexander was deemed to have encroached off her line. This time, Argentina scored to send Scotland home. So Scotland finished bottom of the group with just one point, but the Tartan army was still in good voice. I don't think VAR has been our friend at all uh, <laughs> throughout the championship, but you know what can you do? The, girl, the girls have made history. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't be prouder. What did you make of that? Devastating. We've seen a lot but 18 minutes ago and you absolutely chuck it away, but to be fair to them, they played really well, they worked really hard. Over the course of the three games, they did themselves proud, so can't really complain. So, Izzy, Scotland, as we can see, haven't had much luck with VAR. Um, will they feel it's an opportunity missed? I and mean, there's a lot of sympathy from a lot of people, but should they have done more? Absolutely. They were 3 0 up with, I think it was 15 minutes to go. Um, so, in any competition of this statue, you cannot afford to co concede three goals in that, in that amount of time, especially with the stakes that, that were out there, the, the qualification was, was almost there for the Scottish side. But yeah, like we say, they've been unfortunate with, with VAR. However, it, it was a stonewall penalty, but obviously the decision to have it retaken must be very, very difficult for the, uh, the, the girls to digest. 
How much can Shelley Kerr be proud of her team just to get into this position in the first place? Yeah, it, amazing. They've done an incredible job and uh, it will give the team so much confidence moving forward to, to bigger major tournaments. OK, from game-changing moments to a game-changing player. Brazil's Marta had already written her place in the history books before Brazil's final group game by becoming the first player to score at five different World Cups. But her penalty in the 1-0 win against Italy not only sent Brazil through to the last 16, it also earned her further plaudits. It was Marta's 17th World Cup goal, moving her ahead of Germany's Miroslav Klose as the outright top scorer in both the men and women's finals. So Izzy, how important has Marta been in terms of putting football, women's football, on the map? She's been a pioneer in doing so. She's she's an unbelievable player first and foremost and I think as well because because she's Brazilian I think everybody around the world is so intrigued by Brazilian football there's so many world-class players that come out of Brazil on both the male and the female side of the game and Marta she's been at the top for 15 years now and she's played for many clubs across the world and her goal scoring record speaks for itself so yeah she's she's been a real pioneer for women's football. Do you think that it's probably the last chance for a lot of these players in the Brazilian side in terms of the age that they've got to now? Yeah, absolutely. And she, she's a role model for their team. You know, there's, there's also other quality Brazilian players who are, who are coming through. And you've got Christiane, for example, who scored a hat-trick in the first game. Like, she's shown her qualities. And when Marta cannot necessarily perform to her best, other players are there to step up. OK. There's just enough time to take a quick look at the last 16, then. Here's how the first knockout phase has shaped up. So apart from England-Cameroon, which is the game that stands out for you, Izzy, when you look at that now? The Netherlands versus Japan, I think, is a very exciting fixture. Two, two teams with world-class players. Um, they probably don't want to meet each other at this stage in the competition. However, that's how the draw works. And, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see out of that match who progresses. OK. Well, that is it for week two. A big thank you to Izzy Christensen for her contribution. You're going to be back with us next week as well. And just remember, throughout the tournament, you can also follow the action with the Sky Sports Women's World Cup podcast. And you can also join the conversation on social media with the hashtag It Takes One Moment. But for now, from myself and Izzy, it's goodbye. See you again next time. France 2019 Weekly Roundup, sponsored by Visa, proud partner of the FIFA Women's World Cup.